Hey, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. You know, a lot of us get in here and we say we're feeling nervous and um, <laughs> I haven't been nervous for a Facebook Live in a really, really long time, but I was just telling my boys today, hey, Tanya, I was just telling my boys, like, once I finish this talk, we'll be able to homeschool, I'll be back to normal, I'll be calm, because it's been a little bit, um, yeah, kind of nerve wracking and also exciting. I like to tell my team that to me, nerves are just passion in disguise. So if you're nervous about something, it means you really feel strongly about it and you're really connected to it um, and you're passionate about it. And that's why you feel nervous, which I know other leaders have said, you know, that's the same as being excited. So I take it as a great sign that I'm nervous today because this is a huge group of people and I want to bring a really good message to you guys. So good morning, good morning. I would love to hear as you're coming in to join me. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today. I did a poll last night to kind of see between two topics, which one was more helpful for you guys. And you picked uh, how to get over the fear of being salesy. So that's the one I'm going to be talking about today. And I would love as you're jumping in here. Good morning, Anna. I would love for you if you right now or in the past have had this fear of being salesy i'd love for you to give me a thumbs up emoji and just just so i can see how many people kind of identify with that fear and maybe you're on here and you're like i've never felt salesy in my life i talk to people about young living all the time whether i know them or i don't know them it doesn't matter i <laughs> feeling salesy like i don't know what you're talking about and if that's the case if you have never felt fear around being salesy. I want you to give me like a high five, like that double high five emoji. Because I'd love to know where everybody's kind of working from today. I'm going to really be today talking to those of you who do have a fear of being salesy. Um, but I also think for those of you who don't have that fear, I still really want to encourage you to listen because I guarantee you, you have a lot of team members who feel that way. And it's going to be really helpful as you're coaching them to learn a little bit about how they're thinking and what's driving them, and then to learn how to be able to coach them out of it. All right, so Nina is, I'm not feeling salesy, but I know others who do. All right, Nicole's. So I would be like this for me. When I, um, when I first started with Young Living, I did have a fear of being salesy, and it's kind of fascinated me over the last eight years to look at that. And those of you who know me, I'm a green personality, so I really like to dive into things and dissect them and like really figure them out. So I dove into and dissected this whole concept of feeling salesy. And then for myself, I figured out, okay, how do I, how do I not let this fear hold me back? And what can I do so that I don't, I'm not in fear of being salesy? And I realized I haven't really shared that with a lot of people. This talk I've actually only done for, um, one group before. So I thought it might be kind of fun. Okay. So if you've got your oils, put them on. I have my calm, my CBD calm, which is kind of my best friend right now as we get going. Okay. So let me dive in. I've got notes here. So I would say as a leader who works with lots of builders, um, this whole concept of, Oh, I just, I just don't want to be salesy. I just don't want to be salesy. It comes up over and over and over again, um, especially when people are first starting out. I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to be salesy. And what I've, what I've come to learn is it's actually not the fear of being salesy that makes people take pause. It's actually the fear of what might happen if someone else thinks you're being salesy, right? So that's something we're going to break down today. So I want to ask you guys actually who are on here now, what is something that you're worried about might happen if somebody else thinks that you're salesy? What are you worried might happen down the line? Good morning, Lydia. If somebody else thinks you're salesy, what might happen? What are all these kind of these stories that your brain is working on inside your head telling you, oh, if you're salesy, this is gonna be the outcome. This is what's gonna happen. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. I will share with you some of the things that went through my brain when I was first starting my business and I had the worry about being salesy. So Susanna says you'll turn someone off. Yep. I was super worried that I would, um, I would be, I'd be salesy. They would feel icky. 
they wouldn't want to be my friend anymore. Yeah, Lauren, exactly that. They're going to want to walk away from the friendship because all of a sudden you're not like, you're kind of icky to be around, right? And Sarah's saying the same thing. The relationship will struggle, right? Um, I used to worry if I'm salesy, they'll feel pressured. They'll never want to try Young Living. Um, they might feel awkward and they might tell my other friends that I made them feel awkward. And then it's going to be really awkward with all of us. Um, yep, you'll be ruined relationships. Absolutely. Um, what was another thing? Oh, um, I didn't have this, but I've heard people tell me this. They say, I worry if I'm salesy, the person will get uncomfortable. And the next time they see me, they're going to turn and walk away. I've had somebody tell me that, like, they think that they're going to see the person in the, in the grocery store and the person's going to literally turn and walk away because they don't want to, they don't want to talk to them. Right. Lauren saying, lose trust. They'll prejudge. They'll not hear the true message. Yeah. So this whole fear of being salesy and what we think might happen if we are salesy, these have in our mind, this has really big consequences. I'm hearing people say, I'm going to lose friendships. Um, people aren't going to want to be, um, around me. I'm going to turn people off. I will be alone, right? That's kind of, or, you know, I won't succeed in the business. Um, oh, thank you, Erica. So these are big things. No wonder this fear of being salesy holds us back because those are big fears. Those are big ramifications. So let's look though at the other side of it and look, let's look at what this fear of being salesy can do to hold your business back. So if you think the same, you know, those of you who answered before, think about what your fear of being salesy and creating all these outcomes that are in your mind. How is that holding you back in your business? What are you doing or not doing because of that fear? So while you guys are typing in, I'm going to share some of the things that I've heard from my builders. It can keep them from sharing young living with people, even those that we, we know we really could help. Our fear of being salesy will, will keep us quiet, right? It will keep us from speaking up. It will keep us from saying, you know, Hey, I know you're stressed here. Want to try some of this? Try this calm roller, right? It keeps our, our oils and our, our ninja in our purse instead of being shared, right? It keeps us from speaking up. It can keep you from, what are some of my other things I wrote down? It can keep us from reaching out to people and saying, hey, we're having a class, you know, tomorrow on that very thing. You want to come. I know a lot of builders on my team can be, um, feel fearful about just saying, hey, do you want to do this business thing with me? Hey, do you want to come here about the business? Because they're scared of looking salesy, right? So I'm looking at not closing the deal, not sharing enough. Yes. Yeah. So this, our fear of being salesy holds us back from doing some of the very things that actually build our business. So this is why I want to look at this, <laughs> because if we can get this cleared away, imagine how you're going to soar with your business. I know that you, you want to help people be healthy. You want to help people have financial abundance. There's no doubt in my mind that every single person that's here today and those who are watching the recording later, you have hearts of gold and your intention is never to be salesy. In fact, I would wager a guess that for most of you, it's kind of impossible for you to be salesy. It's not in your nature to be salesy. You're worried about something that actually is never going to happen because that's not who you are at your core, right? So for many of you, you're worrying about something that actually is not really even in the realm of possibilities for you. And sometimes it's really helpful as we break this down to be like, oh yeah, I don't really actually do any of those things. So I can just cross this fear off of my list and just move on with my life and move on with my business. The interesting thing I want to share with you guys is that we sell all day long. We do. We, I sell all day long. This morning, I tried to sell my boys on the idea of putting bananas or berries or some kind of fruit in their oatmeal. Um, just yesterday, I was trying to sell my husband on uh, the concept of putting a wood-burning stove in our home, right? Um, I sell people on the idea that the Constitution's awesome and that liberty is great, right? If you look at your Facebook feed and your Instagram feed, every picture that you post, everything that you put in your stories and be like, oh, I just, you know, had dinner from here. It was great. Oh, I just, you know, I'm loving these new pants from here. That's selling. <laughs> you know, selling is really just like telling people about what we love. So it's so interesting that we have this fear of it, fear of selling, fear of being salesy. What is this all about really guys? Like, what is this fear really all about? Okay, here's my guess. 
this is my guess. It's just my guess. It might be right. It might be totally wrong. But my guess is this. Well, I have two guesses. One, I think that, um, I think that sometimes we're not taught how to do network marketing. So in our passion and like over excitement about Young Living and the products and the business and all of it, we get so excited that we kind of just kind of lose our minds sometimes when we're sharing it with other people. And so our sale can go a little bit overboard. And sometimes we can, we can turn people off, right? Because we just can't stop talking about it. We just have to tell people all the time, all the things and just kind of like really get started, right? And sometimes that doesn't feel great to people. My other guess is that there was probably a time in your life um, when somebody was salesy to you, whether that was an actual salesperson or that was somebody that was trying to get you to do something that you didn't want to do, or someone was pressuring you into something that you really didn't resonate with and it felt icky to you, or it felt uncomfortable to you, or it felt like you were being pressured, or it just felt really awkward. And so you had this experience and it didn't feel good to you. And so you don't want to be someone who creates that kind of feeling in somebody else. And now we have this like term of being salesy that's kind of just out there and you hear it. And so we've just kind of all glommed onto this. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to share with you a story of a time when somebody was really salesy with me And then I want to break down for you why it felt icky to me. And we're going to look at what makes something feel icky and awkward and uncomfortable. And then I'm going to talk to you about how that applies to your young living business and what that can look like. And then I want to talk to you about three simple things you can do to avoid it. Okay. Even if you find yourself falling into salesy mode, you can pull yourself right back out. And you can also look at how you're acting and behaving. And most of the time when you're worried about being salesy, you're not really being salesy. It's just your mind playing tricks on you. So if you have these three little things that you can kind of like take and and just kind of like monitor it by, you can be like, oh yeah, I'm not being salesy. I'm just being helpful. Right? So let me share a story with you. So this story was about... I'm trying to think now. It was probably about five years ago. We were at our, our old house and this house, it was a small house and it was surrounded by trees. And one day this guy came and knocked on the door. And at this time, my kids were probably, I don't know, they were like nine and six, eight and five. And it was dinner time and it was not a good time for him to knock on my door. And so I said, you know what? This is really not a good time. You know, and it's just not a good time. He's like, oh, I want to talk to you about your trees. And I said, well, you're really going to want to talk to my husband and he's not home yet. So this is not a good time. So he left. Then he came back the next day at the same exact time. And I said, again, you know, like when you have young kids and it's, you're getting dinner ready and it's the witching hour, you do not, you're holding yourself together. You don't have the bandwidth for conversations. And this guy was insistent. He's like, listen, you know, we're a tree company. We've been in the neighborhood doing some work. Um, we want to, you know, take some trees down for you while we're still in the neighborhood because we've got all our machinery here and, you know, it's going to be less cost for you because we're already here. And I was like, it's really not a good time for me right now. He's like, no, I just, you know, it's, we're, we're here already. So it, let me just come out here. I want I, I just want to, you know, take a look around. At this point, I, I went out with him. And we're walking around the yard and he's talking about, he just starts talking. He doesn't once ask me, have you ever thought of taking these trees down? I mean, the the matter was, I loved the trees. I loved every tree. There was no way in heck I was cutting down one of those trees. No way. But he persists to talk about kids and how little kids are troublemakers. And he called my boys little kids, which they took offense to because they didn't consider themselves little. And he kept harping on the trees above the swing set. Your kids are going to, you know, you got to take these trees down. It's not safe. They're right over the swing set, blah, blah, blah. And he kept going on and on. Uh, He didn't even ask me where the kids play. They didn't play on the swing set at that point. They were playing in the back, like on the big rocks and in the forest. So anyway, he just kept talking about what he was wanting to talk about. And then at the end, he said, listen, you know, uh, here's my quote. It's going to be $5,000 to take these trees down. And, you know, you're going to need to call me tonight and tell me if you want to do this, because, you know, we're like I said, we're, we're leaving this neighborhood tomorrow. So, you know, tell me tonight. Well, it was like. He left, and I'll tell you exactly what I did. I sat my two boys down. Again, I think they were like nine and six or something like that, eight and five. And I said, boys, 
how was that for you? <laughs> and they said, mom, we didn't like, he called us little kids. He said, little kids were troublemakers. We don't even play on the swing set. I don't even know what he was talking about. And they kind of freaked out. And actually when I told them I was going to tell you this, um, this story today, my oldest, who's now almost 15 is like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to think about that day. And then my youngest was like, oh, it was horrible. <laughs> Right? So like five years later, they still remember this man and this visit because we sat down and we dissected it. And I said, boys, you know, you know, mom runs a business and you know, I'm trying to run my business to help people. I said, if you ever get into business someday, what that man just did is the exact opposite of what you should do, because it did not feel good for us to be interacted with in that way. So I'm going to break down for you. And they totally got it. They saw it. They felt it. So here's what this man did, and here's what I believe being salesy really is. Being salesy is uh, not getting permission to have the conversation. So um, if he had knocked on my door and said, you know, hi, ma'am, I, I know it's so close to dinner time, and yesterday this wasn't a great time for you. I'm, I'm just curious if today, is today a good time for just a quick chat, right? If he had asked my permission, I might have felt a little different going in. The other thing that being salesy looks like is putting your business goals above your customer's needs or desires, right? It was very clear that although he said, oh, you'll save money if we do this now, what he really wanted to do was cut down my trees because he was in the neighborhood. It was convenient for him. He was going to make more money. And he didn't really hide that fact. That felt icky. That was not, right? I don't care if it's more convenient for him. I want it to be when, when I'm ready, right? The other thing is being salesy looks like when you're trying to make a sale without establishing a relationship. He made no attempt to get to know me, the kids. Where do they play in the yard? Do we like the trees? Have we ever thought of cutting down the trees? How long have we lived here? He didn't like nothing. He did nothing to try and establish a relationship. It was all about him. And then the last thing he did, which is the last component of what I think being salesy is about, he pressured me to try to make a decision before I was ready with a product that he didn't even know if I was interested in or not, or something that I could even afford. He didn't give me options. He just said, it's going to be $5,000. You need to tell me like now. He didn't hear me when I said, this is something I would need to talk to my husband about or want to talk to my husband about. He didn't say, you know, or we could do this lower package if this makes more sense. He didn't ask me if I had a budget. He didn't ask me anything, right? Okay, so in a nutshell, all those things, if we had to lump them under one theme, the theme of being salesy is focusing more on yourself than on the person that you're trying to help. And that's what this guy was doing. And I saw through it in an instant. And people see through it so fast, they know. Yeah, it's kind of like those people who friend request you and then they message you like, hey girl, want to come do oils with me? And you haven't spoken to them in 20 years. That's exactly what it's like. So let's talk about specifically, let's move out of the tree guy realm. Let's move into Young Living. And actually, I would love to know, have you guys had an experience like that with someone? Whether they're in network marketing or they're in a completely different industry, I would love to know, have you ever had somebody that made you feel icky because of the way that they were selling to you? And I would love to know, you don't have to share the details, but maybe if you just give like a word or two of who it was or what it was, what it was about. Um, because like I said before, I think sometimes we can do this unknowingly in network marketing, um, because we just don't know better. And we'll talk about that in a second, but I want to share with you while well, you guys are sharing some examples here. Um, and I'm reading, I am reading them as I go. What does being salesy look like in young living? Because again, none of us, no, I've never met a young living person that intentionally does this ever. It's just kind of something that we do without thinking about it. So what does it look like? Um, well, like Laureen said, it's, you know, finding somebody on Facebook that you haven't spoken to in 20 years and you basically message them and you invite them to like an oil class or a thief Zoom. And the first connection and communication you have with them is about what you want to talk to them about. Your business, your products, all of that, without first establishing a reconnection with that person as a human being. Um, also seeing, when you see somebody who, I see this a lot, 
somebody posts on social media about a problem they're having. Oh, my kids aren't sleeping. Oh, you know, I'm sick for the 20th time this year or whatever, whatever it is, right? And then you just jump in either in the comments or you private message them. Oh my gosh, I totally know what would help you. You got to try this. You got to try that. It's been so great for our family. Oh my gosh. And you just go on and on and on about a product or something that you know could help them, which in at its essence is beautiful and wonderful and loving and compassionate. But you do it without getting their permission and without finding out if they're even interested. Because sometimes people just really like to complain on Facebook and Instagram. They just want to talk about being sick or their kids not sleeping well or whatever it is. And sometimes they're showing pictures, you know, of themselves cleaning with a product that makes your heart drop because you know it's toxic, but they're not ready to stop cleaning with that product, right? And so if you jump in and just like, oh, you definitely have to try this without getting permission, that can feel sales if they're not in a place where they're open to getting your input and your ideas. Third thing I see is trying to sign somebody up or trying to help somebody get started before they're ready because it would be really helpful for you. If there's a rank you're going for or a bonus you want or a trip that you're going for, sometimes that can cause people to pressure folks into getting started before they're really ready because you've got, you've got a timeline you're working from and it might not match that other person's timeline, but you kind of want to get them on your timeline. So you just kind of move them into something before they're ready. That's being a little salesy. salesy. Um, oh, and the last thing I see too, this is just a quick social media thing, but I do see a lot of people who, um, their social media is going along great. And then they, then they decide that they want to share young living. And then all of a sudden, their, their feed is all young living. It's like the rest of their life disappears and it's all young living all the time. And none of us are all young living all the time. So we don't want our social media feeds to look like that because then people, you basically are just a sales board at that point. It's just everything is, is sales and that's not natural. That's not normal. So those are some of the things that we, that we can see and you probably see it in other people more than you see it in yourself. And I'm just curious if any of those things, um, resonated with you any of those things that I mentioned. Some of you don't do any of those things, but you're so scared that you might be the person who does some of those things that you never get started sharing because you're really terrified. What if I'm that person? You know, I don't want to be that person. And that literally can paralyze you. And we don't want that either, right? So What I want to give you are three things that you can kind of use. This is what I personally use as my own litmus test for, am I coming from a place of authenticity? Am I coming up from a place of service of trying to offer solutions and support and help someone? Or am I coming from a salesy standpoint, right? So these are the three things that I look at. Um, The first thing, and these are, I call them like the things that you can do to avoid being salesy. And I'm just going to take a quick drink of water first. Oh, a little tip, by the way. Humility oil around the ears is really great when you're learning new things um, and you want to be really coachable and open to things that maybe you haven't thought of or um, maybe you're nervous to hear. Just wanted to share that tip with you. Okay, that's from Gary. Gary knew all the things. Okay, so let's talk about the three things you can do to avoid being salesy. The first one's going to sound so obvious. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I really got on this Facebook Live to hear this, but hear me out. Okay, the first thing is put the focus on the other person, not yourself. And I know that sounds really obvious, but here's the thing. When we're worried about whether we're being salesy or not, It's often because we are trying to be um, interesting more than we're trying to be interested. So we're talking more than we're listening. We're kind of vomiting young living all over someone more than we're finding out what it is that they need and that they desire or what their pain points are. And here's the thing. When we're trying to figure out like, okay, What is the perfect thing that I can say to this person to help them see that thieves is like the best thing ever? Or if we're like, you know, if we're sitting there going, what is the, what are the words that I need to invite this person to this class so that they want to come? 
um, you know, what, what, what can I say to make sure they don't think I'm crazy for talking about oils or, you know, for CBD or, you know, when we're in our head like this, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? Is this coming across right? How am I going to do this? Like, are they listening to me? Are they going to think I'm nuts? We're in our own head. We're focused on ourselves. We're not focused on them. And so it's very easy to slip into being salesy because now we really are. We're, we're, how do I look? How do I sound? How do I feel? What can I say? The easiest thing to do is instantly just when you find yourself in that mode and it'll start to feel weird. And what I noticed is when for myself, when I was first starting to build, when I got into that mode of worrying, what am I going to say? How, how is this going to appear? Then I started worrying about, am I feeling salesy? What are they going to think of me? Right? Should I really do this? Da, 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 da. And that's when I started getting worried and that's when I would get paralyzed. The easiest way to get out of that is to turn your focus back on the other person, to ask them a question, to find out more about what's going on with them. So my mentor, Pam Rich, is an amazingly brilliant woman. And for me as an introvert, an introvert with social anxiety, building this business was really hard. I didn't small talk well with anybody. I didn't even like to small talk. I didn't like to talk to people. It was like awkward and really, really hard. And so I had to painstakingly learn how to talk to people, not just in person, but now on you know, social media. I wasn't even on social media before I started my business because I didn't want to be in conversation with people because that felt awkward to me. So I had to learn how to talk to people. And Pam said something to me that was so helpful. She said, Christy, when, cause when I would start to spiral and be like, ah, oh, I don't know what they're going to think of me. She's like, Christy, when you're nervous, be of service. Now, I'm going to say that again because Pam's phrases, she calls them Pamisms. They always need to be said twice. When you are nervous, be of service. And so this was so helpful to me because I realized even as an introvert, um, I might not be a big talker, but I'm a good listener. And all I had to do was start learning good questions to ask. And so whenever I felt like I was being in my head and wondering how I was doing, how I was talking, all that, I would just turn the focus back on them. I think of it like a spotlight, take the spotlight, put it on them. And I would do that by asking them a question. So I want to give you a few questions that I like to ask people and you are welcome to write them down. I like to keep cheat sheets around when I, I have little post-it notes everywhere with questions like this on there because I can blank out. I literally can blank. Some people are just like, they just text and they just have conversations with people. It's no big deal. For me, it's work sometimes. I really have to like teach myself. So I like cheat sheets. So here are some questions. So let's say, for example, let's use an example that there's somebody on Facebook and you see and they've posted about their kid's you know, not sleeping or that they're sick again, or like all these, these things. And you have now spotted someone that you could help and you're really excited. And now you're worried because you don't know what should I send them? Should I send them a graphic? Should I, should I invite them to a class? Should I like, what should I do? And then you get into salesy mode because now you're thinking of yourself. So let's not think of you. Let's think of that person who just posted on Facebook. So here's something that I might message them about. And this is usually with someone that I already kind of know, um, but it can work with someone you don't know too. I might say, I might message them and say, you know, Hey, that sounds super challenging. Like, have you found anything that's worked well for you? You know, or something like, tell me more about what's going on for you. I saw your post. Oh my gosh, what's going on. Right now you get more information from them. Um, here's another one. That sounds, that sounds really tough. How long have you been going through that? right? Um, that sounds really frustrating. I'm so curious. What have you tried so far to help? Right. Or I love this one. Like, Hey, what do you think might help with that? All these questions help give me information. I'm gathering information. So I get to know the other person better so that instead of coming from a place of how can I sell this to them? I'm coming up from a place of, oh, I know what this person's going through so well. I know what they've tried. I know what's worked. I know what's not worked. I kind of know what they're open to. And then I can come from a place of solution and helping instead of just trying to like push something on them that I don't even know that they want yet. So I go back to the tree guy. Like the tree guy could have said to me, hey, this is a gorgeous house. Like how long have you guys lived here for? He could have said, oh, how old are your boys? 
Oh, I just, I've noticed that you have a lot of trees here. You know, how do you feel about them? Have you ever thought of trimming them before? Tell me where your kids play. You know, tell me how you use the yard. Has, have the trees ever fallen down before? Have you lost any limbs in any storms? Like he could have been gathering so much information that probably would have helped me realize, oh yeah, might be helpful to get those trees trimmed. Might be a little safe to do that, right? So the more questions he would have asked me about me, the more of a connection and rapport I would have had with him. Because people don't, the thing I've learned is that even as me with an introvert who has trouble with small talking, it doesn't really matter because people don't really care as much about me as they care about talking about themselves. They really like to be heard. They really like to be seen. I know that because that's how I feel too, right? So, hey, Melissa. So I always tell my team this. When someone's like, oh, I don't know, I kind of have this person I want to invite, but I'm not sure, it feels kind of weird. And I said, well, why would you, do you know why you would invite them to this, this 101 class? And sometimes they'll be like, oh yeah, because this and this, and I think that this could really help them. I'm like, so just invite them. And so there's like, no, I don't really know why. I guess I just needed to think of somebody to invite, so I put their name down. I said, well, why don't you go back and work on their relationship a little bit more? You know, why don't you go ask them some questions, talk to them, hang out with them until you know kind of why them coming to a class would help them or why thieves would help them or why these things would help them first. So turning the focus off ourselves, asking really good questions, continuing to ask questions to get to know people until we get to a point where we know without a doubt, oh my gosh, yes, I can totally help this person and here's why. That's when for me, all fear of being salesy goes out the door because all of a sudden I'm just like, I'm going to be a hero for this person because I know that what I'm about to share with them, they're ready for and that they, um, that would really help them. So that's the first thing. Turn the focus on to the other person. The second thing, and I kind of went into it just now, like, um, a second way to avoid feeling salesy or being afraid of feeling salesy is get somebody's permission before you share. So if the tree guy had come to my door and said, hey, you know, I was just driving by, we've been doing some work in the neighborhood and I noticed that you have a swing set. So I'm assuming you have young kids. You know, I just, I noticed a few trees in the back that if you trim them might be a little safer for your family. And I was just curious, would you be open to just taking a quick walk around the backyard with me so I could point some of those things out to you? Of course I would have said yes, <laughs> right? Like he, he, if he had asked my permission, instead of saying, you know, hey, come out here, I need to talk to you. I would have been way more amenable to him and receptive to him. So, and it would have felt way less slimy, like I would have felt like this guy was on my side instead of being some slimy salesperson who's just trying to make more money in the neighborhood. Okay, so how does this look like? Specific examples. Let's go back to the example of like the person who posts on Facebook about the kids not sleeping or people not being healthy or whatever. Instead of instantly messaging them and telling them the solution that you think would be great for them, why not find out if they're open to it first? And this saves not only them heartache, but it saves you heartache too. Because nobody wants to be the person that has someone tell them no, which you can't avoid in this business, by the way. You're going to be told no all the time. But sometimes it can be helpful to try and just find out if you have permission to share. So I wrote down a couple questions and examples. So, and sometimes this comes up a lot, not just with people on social media, but friends and family members. Again, we love Young Living so much and we love our friends and family so much that the instant we hear of a, a problem or a challenge, we want to jump right in and tell them how to solve it. But sometimes they're not ready to hear that yet. They're not interested in going natural. You know, they're, they like whatever they're doing. So it can really save you some time and heartache to just ask the question. So you can ask a question like, you know, are you, are you looking for solutions to the sleeping problems or do you feel like you've got it under control? You know, another question is, you know, um, I have experienced something really similar with my hormones and I found something that, that worked really well for me. I'm happy to share if you would find that helpful, right? Opening the door for them to say yes or to say no. Um, you can say something like, you know, I haven't experienced that personally, but I do know somebody that has. And if, 
you want me to tell you what has worked for them, just let me know. Right? Then they can let you know. Um, around classes, if I have somebody that I have in mind um, that I'd love to invite to a class, I will say something like, you know, we have a class that's coming up. It's going to cover exactly that. And it might be really helpful for you. Do you want me to send you the link to, so you can join us? Like I'm going to ask them. I always ask permission. I never add anybody to a group without their permission. I never send anyone a link to a lookbook or to a class or to anything without their permission. Because again, it always goes back to, I don't want to feel salesy. I want to have permission. I want to know, yes, that person said yes, absolutely. And because then when I send whatever it is I want to send to them, I know I'm being of service. And then I feel good. I know they feel good. And it's just good all around. Um, okay. Um, once, Because here's something I wrote down. Once you get someone's permission to share about your product or your business, you're no longer being salesy. You're actually just being helpful. So that's why for me, permission is really, really great. Okay. Um, so Kathy, I don't know if that helps you, but that's how I bridge the gap from finding out what the issue is to that I have an oil for that. I'm going to ask their permission. I'm going to say, so I'm hearing you say that, you know, your kids haven't been sleeping. It sounds like you've tried a lot of different things. Most of them haven't worked before. It sounds like you're open for something new. I actually have something that's worked for me and my kids in sleep. Would you, would you like me to tell you about it? So I bridge the gap between seeing the problem and offering the solution with the invitation, the asking of permission. That's how I do that. Because if they say no, then here's the, if they say no, then you know, I'm not ready or no, I'm not really interested. Then I just say, you know, that's, that's totally cool. Like, do you, do you want me to like follow up with you in a little bit, in a couple months and see if, see how it's going? you know, and, and see if there's anything that I can do. And if they say yes, then now I have their permission to follow up, right? Or if somebody says, no, I can't come to that class. Like it's just it's during my kid's bedtime. That doesn't work. I can say, oh, that's totally, I totally understand. Nighttimes are crazy for us too. If we have a class during the daytime um, at some point, would you like me to send you it? Would you like me to let you know about that? And if they say yes, now I have permission to follow up. Then I don't feel salesy when I follow up because they've already asked me to. So I try to find out who's ready for me to follow up. Um, okay, the last thing, the third thing. So we talked about putting the focus on the other person and taking it off of yourself. We've talked about asking their permission to share. And the third thing is don't vomit young living all over them. I'm sure you've had this happen, right? With somebody that maybe they've started their own business or they, they just have an idea that they love to share. And I will be, <laughs> I'll tell you for me, um, I'm really passionate about the constitution and liberty and freedom and all that stuff. And my family, I've noticed that my boys and my husband, sometimes I feel like they think I'm taking it a little too far when they ask me a question and I talk for 20 to 30 minutes about my answer. Because I'm really passionate about it. And like somebody asked me about it, I'm like, let's talk about it. Right. And I get out my little, my, I get out my pocket constitution and I, I flip to a page and like the second I do that, they're like, oh my God, here she goes again, right? Because I'm really passionate about it. But I can I can vomit the constitution and liberty all over people. And that's when it feels salesy to them. And that's when they're like, leave the room, guys. Here goes mom. She's getting started. And Sometimes when we have things that we love that much, like Young Living and Oils and Thieves and Ninja and Nature's Ultra and the supplements and multi-greens and all these things, when someone maybe asks us a question or we see a need, we can kind of just vomit it all over them. And nobody likes to be vomited on. <laughs> it's just It's just not fun. So sometimes we can impact people more and not feel salesy. If we keep it focused again to like the thing that they asked about, the pain point that's most important to them, right? We might feel really strongly about one product line, but if they're not interested in it, then it might be helpful to just save that other product line to talk to them about it later. We don't need to share all the things all at once um, to everybody. And so part of learning how to share is learning how to filter. Okay, they're asking me about this. This is what's really important to them. So if I focus on that and I give them information about that, how I can help them with that, that's really serving them. When I start talking about all these other things that are important to me, 
and that I want them to love, that's turning the focus off them. And then it's probably going to feel a little bit, they're going to be like, okay, I'm done now, right? I don't know if this is making sense, but it's something I've noticed that a lot of people do. Their love can overwhelm people. It's like suffocation by young living love. So here's a couple things. Um, I think you can focus on sharing just stories. We can overwhelm people with information. And oftentimes people just want to hear your story. They want to know that they've heard, you've heard their story and then that you can share a story so that they understand that you've heard them, you understand them, you get it. And then you have something very simple that you can offer them. Um, a couple things for social media too, around vomiting over people. Um, let's not pressure people into getting started because you have a goal that you want to hit. Um, in terms of on social media, of course, hit your goals. Oh my gosh, I'm such a red. So go for all your goals. Go for your rank goals. Go for your OGV goals. Go for all of that. But when we're on social media saying, hey, I want people to get started because I got this really big goal and this is what I want to do. And that can feel icky to people. Not everyone. Some people are like, oh yeah, I want to support you with your goal. That's awesome. And then other people, it can feel icky. So just be conscious of how much you're showing up on social media, throwing out things because you've got goals and you want other people to help you hit them. Just be conscious of it. I'm not saying don't do it because if it feels authentic to you, do it. But if it feels salesy or makes you afraid that you're being salesy, then it probably is for you. So just if it feels, if you're worried about if it's going to feel icky, just don't do that. If you want to and it feels great and authentic, go for it. Um, I also think that with posts, when you're posting, think about how you would, because I see people and they share so naturally about everything and then it comes to Young Living and we kind of turn into like this infomercial and very formal and it doesn't sound like you anymore. So when you're posting about Young Living, I want you to imagine as you're writing your post or you're doing a story or whatever, imagine that you're doing it for your best friend. How would you share that Young Living product with your best friend? What words would you use, right? You're not going to be using some of this like, you know, buy this today. I'm offering this today. That's, that doesn't make sense. That's salesy. You wouldn't say it to your best friend. So don't post it on your feed that way. How would you say it to your best friend? Oh my gosh, I just tried this last night and this is what happened. I'm like tickled pink. Like I'm so excited. I had to tell you about it, right? So have your best friend in your mind as you're writing your posts um, and as you're doing your stories because that's going to keep you in authentic mode instead of in salesy mode. All right. So let's recap really quick. When we're worried about being salesy, we probably are being salesy because we're focused on ourselves instead of being focused on the other person. The worry and the fear that we might come across as salesy and lose friendships or lose potential sales or all these things, it holds us back from growing our business and from growing ourselves. So there are three very simple ways that you can use as a litmus test to make sure that you're not being this salesy person that you're afraid of being. One, focus on the other person. Instead of focusing on you, focus on them. Ask them good questions, listen. Secondly, get their permission before sharing. Always get people's permission. This eliminates the fear of being salesy because when you have their permission, you're not being salesy, you're being helpful. And the third thing, don't vomit young living all over people. It goes back to what is it that they need? Focus on that. Don't give them all the things because sometimes for some people that can feel too much. Okay. So I want to leave you um, with a little challenge today. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in. I can take like five minutes to do questions. Um, but while you're writing out any questions, I wanted to let you know I have a challenge for you. I don't want you guys to go through this 12 days of diamonds and listen to all these talks and just listen to them. I want you to go through these 12 days of diamonds talks and I want you to try to implement one thing from every talk. One thing that resonated with you. Doesn't mean you have to do them all right now, but as you're listening, make a note from each talk of this is one, the one takeaway that I want to use in my business. And then find a way to intentionally try that in the next month or two. 
okay? Don't just sit and hear information, you wanna put it into action. So what I'd like for you to put into action from, from my talk here today, I want you to go back in your mind to a time in your Young Living career when you felt salesy. I want you to take a minute to dissect what happened. Did you vomit oils on someone? Did you reach out before getting permission? Did you uh, focus more on yourself than, than the other person? Did you push them into something before they were ready for it? Just no judgment. You're just learning. I do this all the time. I learn from my mistakes. Wow, that didn't go very well. What is it I can do better from that, right? So dissect it. It will be really helpful information for you to have because once you know what you've done, that maybe you realize, oh yeah, that's probably what kind of made that feel a little weird. Then you can shift it next time. And I want you to come up with a plan. Maybe put it on a post-it note, right? Here's a question I might ask next time instead of vomiting oils over somebody. Or here's the way I'm going to, you know, I'm thinking of a person. I want to invite them to something. I'm just going to write down what I'm going to say to invite them and get their permission. Right? So you're kind of creating this little um, cheat sheet for yourself of how to help yourself get over that fear of being salesy for the next time. Um, it's really about building skills. And the way we build skills is we just try different things over and over again. And the beautiful thing about the Young Living business is there's no shortage of opportunities to try things differently the next time. Right? There's always somebody new to talk to. There's always somebody new to invite just the opportunities are, are just plentiful. So if you're somebody who came on here at the beginning, you said, I don't have a problem. I don't feel like I'm salesy. I'm not afraid of being salesy at all. My challenge to you is this. I want you to have a conversation with at least one of the builders on your team who does have this fear. I want you to go back and I want you to talk with the people who are holding themselves back because they're paralyzed with being salesy, losing friends, all these things. We can fix this. We can solve this. So talk with them. Ask them questions. Find out what's going on in their minds. Have them watch this video and then work through it with them and help coach them around this until this fear for them dissipates or goes away. Okay. So that's what I would like everybody to do, um, is take this and to actually put it, put it into action. So I'm just looking back to see if there are any questions. I know there were some way earlier on, but I think I might've addressed them all. Let's see. Yeah. We talked about that one. Let's see. Okay. I think so we're good. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that this was helpful. Um, and I am just so honored to be here and to have time with you guys. So have an awesome weekend and enjoy the rest of the 12 Days of Diamonds. Bye, guys.